Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back once again to another Fallout 4 settlement build. Today we're going to be checking out this farmhouse here, which I thought would be quite interesting considering thus far it's really only been shops and stores. But like always guys, all the mods I'm using at the moment are going to be listed down in the description, so if you're interested in those, feel free to go check them out. And then one last thing before we go ahead and get started. There's actually a YouTuber by the name of Phoenix who was able to replicate my general goods store, all while using only the vanilla Fallout items, so no mods whatsoever. And if you want to go check her video out, there should be a link somewhere on screen. But yeah, the point I'm trying to get at is that it really is possible to replicate just about everything you see in this whole town, even if you're on a console and don't have access to mods just yet. So yeah, if you're interested in seeing that, feel free to go take a look. But anyways guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the build. So first things first, we'll go ahead and check out the front of the build, and also the back as well, which we usually don't get an opportunity to do for most of the other ones in this town, considering they don't really have much going on back there. But considering that this is a farm, there's actually some plants and whatnot, and I've even gone as far as including a sort of windmill in the back. And really quick, we'll head on over there. You can see off there in the corner, there's even a grave. Just to make it seem like maybe one day it was very windy and someone was up there repairing it and fell down. Probably not a fun way to go, but yeah, that happened. Moving on back to the front of the build, you'll notice off to the left hand side, we have ourselves a well just so the farm can get water whenever it needs. And there's even a hose that they could hook that up to. And also a few other decorations just to make that wall look a lot less boring. And if you're wondering why there's a sign up on the very top, even though this is more of a house than, say, a business or type of store, it's just because I figured, you know, these guys are a farm after all. They're definitely not going to be keeping all their crops and everything to themselves. So I figured maybe some of the nearby stores could come over in this direction and purchase some of the excess food that they end up making. And like most of our other builds, we do have quite a bit going on here at the deck. There's even a wall where bounties and wanted posters could get stuck up on. And then off to the other side we have a seating area, a few carts and tools off to the far side, and even a barbecue way in the back in case they wanted to grill up some of their cattle and sell it to the public. Now moving on to the interior, I'm sure you'll notice that it really is quite a mixture of a lot of our other builds in terms of the layout. You know, just like our general goods store, it has a big central room in the middle, but unlike that one, it's also got quite a few other smaller rooms that branch off to the sides. And there's even a staircase in the very back that leads upstairs to even more rooms. And this, I gotta say, this is probably the coolest door I've seen. Although, I'll be honest, I doubt it's the best at keeping people out of here. And that's actually gonna play in to a little backstory, just kind of concerning the owner's child. But right here in front of us, we have the living room section, which I gotta say has got a really nice warm atmosphere. And I think that's all thanks to the orange light we have, which actually comes from the new Wasteland Workshop DLC. I think it's definitely a nice change up from the normal white light that we're always used to. Sitting in this room though, we've got a TV, which obviously does not work anymore. There's also tons and tons of wall decorations. You can see we got some of the animal heads hung up there. There's even a picture. And in this build, unlike pretty much all of our other ones, I have tried to make use of the pictures that are actually in frames, instead of just using those bright and colorful posters. And I think since we were attempting to have more of a homey feeling, it's really worked out quite well. As for this room though, that really is it, aside from a couple other toys and knickknacks here and there, and also some extra storage space. And now moving on over to the left-hand side of the build, as you guys can see, we've got ourselves a nice big dining room table. And considering the fact that this is a farmhouse after all, I thought it would only be fitting that we placed lots and lots of food on here. And although this may seem like a simple piece of advice, I gotta say using a nice variation of chairs really can help give your build that wastelandy feeling. Because I feel like if someone's out scavenging the wasteland for furniture that they can bring back to their own home, it's not often that they find the same decoration or piece of furniture. You know, I'm sure they would have been fine making do with what they had. But aside from those, once again, we've got some more decorations on the walls, including some nice candlesticks, a lantern here and there. 
just to give this place a nice moody atmosphere. And in this build you'll also notice that I have tried to use a few more plants than we normally incorporate in our builds. And that'll just about do it for our dining room area here. So now we'll go ahead and move on in and check out the bathroom. And let's be honest, this really is just your standard looking bathroom. Not really anything special going on here. Although I did try and give it a little bit of backstory. As you can see down below the sink, I've tried to make it look as if there's a leak and someone came in and tried to fix that up. Hence the reason for all the supplies and different types of tools down here. Oh yeah, and one more little detail I tried out was placing the candles on the plate. Not sure about you guys, but I thought it was a nice decoration, and it's also pretty functional if you think about it too, considering as of now our only portable source of light is a lantern, and I gotta say I've used enough of those as it is throughout the rest of the build, so the candles on the plate just seemed like the next best alternative. Next up, towards the back of the build, we've got ourselves a couple more rooms. This one here to the left hand side is the workshop. And inside here we've got a couple tools and goodies lying around and on the walls. As you can see there's a bulletin board, a poster, and also a tool rack. And even a workbench below that. And off to the right there is just a bunch more storage in case you needed even more room for tools and other parts and whatever else you'd need in a place like this. And then moving all the way outside, as you can see this is where the farm is and that would be our windmill. But yeah, back here we've got pretty much every plant you can think of. So as you'd imagine, this farm's doing quite well for itself. And then last but not least on this floor, we do have our kitchen towards the very back. And in here we've got plenty of food and different sorts of ingredients lying out, and there's even some leftovers left out on the table, along with a coffee machine and, you know, your standard fridge grill and sink like any normal kitchen should have and then off to the back here is something I actually saw in one of the loading screens but to me it just seemed like a nice place to get your hair cut and maybe this is just a temporary thing that this house has lying out but I thought it was a cool addition nonetheless in fact since this town doesn't have any sort of barbershop just yet maybe from time to time some of the settlers would come in here and get themselves all groomed up and now that we've got all the first floor covered, we'll go ahead and move on up to the upstairs. And right here, this is just some more decoration in the hallway leading up to the stairs. And as you come up here, you can see there's a nice big illuminated sign that says Home Sweet Home. And also this one that's a little more on the sad side. And this reads, We'll be together soon. Hinting towards what happened to the baby. And this all goes back to that front door and how that was all busted in. But yeah, as you can see, the baby's bed is in pretty bad shape. So all this being the case, I'm sure you can imagine that someone, maybe a raider, or even someone in town, maybe broke in and took this family's child. Now, don't get me wrong, I love making my builds look decently hospitable. But that being said, I still think it's cool to add these different details and backstories that keep the Wastelanders in check just to reassure them that this world is still not a place you'd ever want to live in. Now moving on towards the other side of this room, I've tried to make it seem as if this is the owner's office, or maybe he manages where his food gets sold to, or even some of his supply lines on that terminal there. And I also attempted to make it look as if maybe this guy is a retired Brotherhood of Steel member. And that's why we have the power armor helmet up on the shelf there. There's also a few more things in the other room that help resemble and tie him back to what he once was before he became a farmer. And that's just about everything for this room here, so now we'll go ahead and take a look at the owner's bedroom. I gotta say though, when you're looking at this build from the outside, it really does not seem all that big, but once you get indoors, you'll notice I really was able to fit quite a bit in here. But yeah, like I said, this is where the owner sleeps, or the owner and his wife. And in this room we have a couple items up on the walls and also some storage for the owners to place all their clothing in and some of their other goodies. However, that is not all. Like I said, something does tie this guy back to his past a little bit more than the power armor helmet alone would. The owner's actually got himself a decent sized armory back here that really is stock full of ammo and a few weapons too. 
But anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today. So hopefully you did enjoy the build. Please feel free to let me know if you have any suggestions for future builds or even some improvements we could make to this one. Oh yeah, and the new Far Harbor DLC should be coming out sometime tonight. And I'm almost 90% certain there's at least going to be one settlement in that DLC. So hopefully we should be able to try some cool builds out in that area just to have a nice variety of towns to build in. Not sure about you guys, but I was definitely thinking something along the lines of maybe a casino there or some kind of rugged mercenary bar. But like I said, guys, that's going to do it for today. So thank you for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one.